Hey everyone, just a quick overview of the equipment we're going to use to install mobile internet router in the van today. Um, this is going to be a deep dive on any of these components. I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up. It's really more of an installation video than, than anything, but you'll see where we end up at the end. Um, I've been using a T-Mobile hotspot plan, which is pretty competitively priced. I think it's around, well, it is $50 a month flat. It comes with its own little hotspot, which was fine to throw in the van and use uh, in the beginning. But I really needed something that was going to be uh, a lot more reliable. I needed something outside of the van, right? It's sort of a Faraday cage, um, loosely when you have everything inside that big metal box. And with the big, with the spring road trips coming up, I wanted to make sure that I had, I had access to internet and Wi-Fi at campgrounds and locations as, as we traveled around. So. What I decided to do was go all in on 5G. So I've got a Pepwave um, Max BR1 Pro 5G. I think I've got that correct. Uh, this is a professional grade mobile router. It has more features than I will ever use. But the key thing is it did have 5G. Now it's got a spot for two SIMs. I am running T-Mobile in one, the other is empty. Uh, these are not capable of bonding for additional bandwidth. They are failover only. That was fine for me. My backup plan would be to use my phone and, and AT&T as needed. Obviously, all of the connectors, these are your Wi-Fi connectors, um, and I will be installing this via a 12-volt cigarette lighter plug just to keep things easy. I thought about trying to hard hardwire it, but decided let's just go with what we have. Now, for the antenna on top of the van, we're going to be using this pointing 7-in-1. Uh, so this has everything for 5G, for GPS, for Wi-Fi. Um, I am going to be using a magnetic uh, mount. I'm not going to seal this. I'm going to come out the back of the unit, as you see here, and go into the roof access box that's already pre-installed on the Winnebago Rebel. A couple of issues with this cable bundle. They include it with abrasion wrap, which is not waterproof, because they really expect you to come out of this opening straight down into the van and then seal this up on the outside. Since we're not doing that, I use some split shrink wrap tubing. I'll throw up a couple of still pictures here. This got the job done. This is like two to one shrink ratio with um, some 3M adhesive on it. It worked. It was kind of a pain to work with and it stiffened things up, um, but hopefully that will allow us to do um, a waterproof entry point into the van. Now, in order to, to do that, that entry point's gonna come through the, uh, the access box, but I'm gonna use a C-View cable gland. I've got a couple here. One is uh, a, a larger round, cable, which would have to be used just for this particular cable bundle. I'm hoping not to use that one. I've got this rectangular one, and I hope to run not only the uh, mobile internet bundle through, but I also have a GMRS radio already installed. I'd like to pull that cable gland off and just do everything in, in, in one spot. Um, you know, these are marine grade, so I have a lot of confidence in them that they are going to stay waterproof over the long haul versus having to do sealant and, and think about that every every spring or every summer and redoing that. One challenge here, um, the cable bundle is not perfectly round. It's seven individual cables. Um, and so I grabbed the cheap calibers out of my garage, did a little bit of measuring. It's about 12 mil millimeters at its thinnest and about 16 or 17 at its widest. So what I'm hoping to do is sort of force that into a rounder shape. And then when we actually put the, um, the rubber grommet around it and tighten that down, it will kind of bring everything into round and and force that to be waterproof. Plan B is always going to be to use sealant. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you sometimes have to do that when you don't want to, but I'm going to see if we can stay away from it. So this is what we've got. Um, we're going to go out, work on getting the cable gland uh, uh, drilled out, work on that cable bundle, and then really it's a pretty simple uh, task of just getting in the rooftop box, fishing the cable in, and then hooking up the router and going. So when I see you next, we'll be starting that process, and fingers crossed, it'll go well. Well, after a little bit of experimentation and ruining one of the cable glands, I settled on the larger round one. Ended up with about a 15 and a half millimeter hole, and that seems to have provided me a good seal uh, with the cable bundle. So we're going to pull the van around, start punching holes in that box, and get this thing mounted up. Hey, so we're inside the van right now, and um, just wanted to throw a little tip out there. If you decide for the first time to get into that rooftop access box, um, it's kind of hard to work your way down inside the cab. So what I've done is I've used a zip tie 
and in this case I've attached it to two leads on the antenna wire and then I'm able to pull that up and in with my hands a lot easier and use it like a fish tape. So um, I got to go back outside and fish the rest of the connectors in, but now all I have to do is come in and then gently fish them through as opposed to digging around in the very small opening with my finger hoping I can catch it. Okay, as you can see, we've got the cable gland in. I ended up mounting it on the side and using a little bit of sealer back behind the gasket just because it was so hard to get to. Preferably would have mounted it back here, but apparently there are two mounting tabs that were in the way of a gland that large. So you can see it's not entirely perfect, but I think it, uh, it's gonna get the job done. Also found a hole up here. So probably gonna need to take care of that in the future. Routed the cable along here, up above. This isn't touching. It's not exactly what I would like, but I think it'll get the job done for now. Also a little neoprene underneath the antenna, and we'll just see how this thing works. Also, pick up after yourself. It's always a good idea. Now to mount the router. Okay, well, we finally completed the install. This is actually a couple of days later, maybe more than a little bit. But you can see I've brought the cable down um, through the roof access port. So far, no leaks, and it's been rained on and driven multiple times. What I decided to do is just put in my temporary shelf here, and I've zip-tied the router to, um, to the shelf while I've connected all the cables up just so I can have some flexibility in deciding where I mount it. Might mount it here, might mount it up against that wall, uh, might build a special little platform for it so that it has cooling all the way around. But so far, so good. 